In this video, I have a Sherwood model CDC5030. This is a five disc compact disc changer, which um, is not functioning. So we're gonna take a look and uh, see if we can get this one working. Coming up next. Now, if anybody doesn't know anything about Sherwood and who they are, um, they were an American designed brand and they were built in Korea. So the construction quality of this is probably not that bad. You know, it's, uh, I haven't had one of these apart, so I don't know whether this works. Let's get power, okay. Well, that part's good, error, uh oh. That's not good. It doesn't open. We may have a belt problem. Let's pull the top. Does that look familiar to anybody? So when I press the button here, I'm definitely hearing a motor turn, but uh, I think we're going to have a belt problem on this one. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how to take this mechanism apart. Um, I don't ever recall working on a shear wood. So this is going to be a new experience for me too. I think first I'll have to start with removing the clamp assembly because we're going to have to get underneath the tray here. It may be just as simple as removing the, the actual tray and accessing belts underneath there. And I'm pretty much going to guarantee you I don't have the belts to fix this thing. But I may have I may have some rubber bands that might fit. Okay, will this lift off? I guess I'm going to have to remove the front uh, bezel and remove this bracket and then we'll get the screws out on the side and I should be able to lift this unit out, up, the, the uh, turntable assembly. So once the front comes off, I don't have to remove it completely, just enough to clear the front piece here. I can remove the screws on the side that hold the brackets in place. That bracket comes off. Now there's two more screws on each side that holds these side brackets in. One there. there and I probably do need to take out maybe not I guess I do I need to take out these ones as well now the disc tray lifts up Okay, we have one belt here, That's, uh, that one's what turns the, the unit around, but 
That's weird. There's going to be another one down on the, underneath here. Again, I've, I've never seen anything like this. It's not... Uh, doesn't appear to be a Sony made unit. But there's a there's a button down here too. I don't know what that's for. But there's a there's a button right down here that you could you know. Wonder what that there's for. Find out where that other belt is. It's obviously going to be a belt that that's going to drive this gear here. I can see it. Looks like it drives from over here, but you see, I, I can't. I wonder if that bottom plate does come off this thing. I bet, yeah, the bottom plate does come off this, and this is a sub chassis. So, how's this belt? This one doesn't appear to be too bad. I'm going to clean this one up. And it would not be an easy one to change either because if you look at how it's put together, take this whole mechanism apart and actually take the gear out to get at that belt but this one here does not appear to be in bad shape we'll just clean that one up with a bit of alcohol take the oxidation off it and then I'll put the um, tray assembly in and we'll flip it over and try removing the bottom The only reason I'm putting this piece back in is because I don't think I'll need to go under the, underneath the thing again. I might, but we'll just put it in place for now. So this time we'll remove all these screws from the bottom and see if I have any better luck at locating the main drive belt. Okay. Now that we've got the cover sort of detached. It's got a ground wire that's holding it. This is our our main mechanism. Here's our main transformer here, main board. We've got a couple motors in this thing. We have a motor here. This one I guess is, this one raises and lowers the the mechanism. We have a motor over here. This one's the one that's going to operate the um, the tray in and out and there's another one that turns the tray around because that one's actually attached to the tray. That's a Sony chip on that one. What does this other one say on it? This one's an Inkel. I-N-K-E-L. That's the that's the uh, that's the parent brand of Sherwood. So they've actually done their own custom chip on this thing.
this part is certainly Sony. Okay. This unit will lift out now. I'm just going to undo a couple of wire connectors here to get me some clearance. And we have a belt that's basically become very stretched. Let's see if I can find something that's a, a reasonable facsimile that will drive this thing, even if it's only temporarily. This belt here is a reasonable facsimile. And that should provide plenty enough torque on this thing. Because if, I, if this thing works, it's going to be going up for sale. This belt also might be worn. So I'm not going to be dancing in a jig anytime soon until I see this thing actually work. Actually, this belt's not slipping. This one's quite tight. But one thing that does happen on these units is these little switches here. Uh, those little switches, the contacts in them go bad. So they need to be uh, cleaned up with a contact cleaner because they do cause many problems those rocker type switches. We'll give these little switches a little blast of cleaner. If I run this switch, if I run this back the other way, it'll rotate, no problem. I even put my finger on there to try and stop it. Yeah, there's lots of torque. Lots of torque on this belt, so that one's not a problem. So let's just put the uh, laser assembly back into its track.
Okay, power. Open. Okay, put a disc in, close it up. Let's hit play and see if it'll find a disc. I don't know which tray I'm in, so we'll find out when it gets there. Good sign. Looks like it's playing. I'm gonna let it play for a while. I'll shut the camera off while this is going on, obviously, but I'll let this thing play for a while. Ah! Oh, I had it hit it quite hard to make it skip there, but looks like we may have a winner here. Okay, I'm gonna let this thing play for a bit, and uh, we'll see if it holds out. Well, it's still playing. So it's time to start putting this thing together for now. So now that the unit's completely back together, I figure we'll give it one last test. I'll let you guys sample my music bakery royalty-free music. We'll load it in the disc position number one and select number one. You guys recognize this one, obviously. CD player actually has a very good sound to it. I'm really impressed. I'm just listening to these on small speakers here in the shop, but it has incredible sound.
Okay, I'm probably, I, I, I know that that one for sure is, I'm gonna shut that one off because I know for sure that that particular song, there's been a fraudulent claim by the Francia Jazz Line Orchestra on that track. So, I don't wanna get hit, so I'll shut that one down. Um, all that music was uh, from the musicbakery.com. It's all royalty free. You can download and purchase that for your projects online. It's not cheap. Okay, it's not cheap, but it is a, a, a way you can license your content if you produce videos and so forth. Um, I, I, from, this is from my commercial days when I did uh, a lot of uh, promotional and uh, commercial videos and we had to use royalty free content on it. Otherwise, we could have been sued. So, there it is. It's fixed. I like this. 73.59. It's a 74 minute disc. Uh, one second to spare. How did that happen? Like this little cover that stops you from accessing the one disc. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again in the next one real soon.